Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. I hope you're enjoying this rain. If you're here in the Metroplex, it's been just wonderful. Um, I'm extremely happy about it because it means uh, we're going to have some some big time mosquitoes here in the next few weeks. So hopefully my service providers are going to be very, very busy taking care of you guys. Um, so, again, thanks for tuning in today. Um, I have a guest who's going to actually she's kind of co-hosting, not really a guest, but I want everybody to welcome Meg Curry. Hello, hello. And uh, Meg brings with her all kinds of diseases today. She's sick and nasty and ugh. So None don't, of them are mosquito related. Yeah, don't get it. Well, you think, you think, because they, you know. They're calling it mono, so she, she, you know, she gets around. Meg gets around. That's the deal. She's uh, <laughs> it's an ear infection. She goes okay. clubbing. She goes clubbing, and she goes kissing all the guys, uh-huh, and sure. and uh, just so um, you know, you can actually pass on what is that uh, spinal meningitis? I think that way too. So you need to be careful of that, Meg. If you watch the TV commercials, it usually affects teenagers to twenty five year olds. So I'm kind of a little bit out of that range. But thank you for the compliment. It doesn't doesn't seem to matter though, because you got it. Whatever you do, you know. Um, when we talk about protecting ourselves from mosquito bites and stuff, it is all about protection, Meg. And and you just need to wear protection if you're going to be out there, you know. That's true. I actually was bitten a few weeks ago by mos- some mosquitoes. But I wasn't talking about it mosquitoes. It was unrelated <laughs> to this this particular thing. Okay. So, um, well, we're, um, we've got lots of mosquitoes in the news these days. So, you know, this is, uh, this is the deal. We, you know, 10 years ago, <laughs> mosquitoes didn't, you know, take over the news like they do now. But uh, there's just so much going on. And so, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the Zika and about the West Nile. You know, I still maintain that if you're in Texas, uh, especially North Texas, you need to be more concerned with West Nile uh, than you do with Zika, at least for the time being. And so, uh, so let me go through some of these numbers. Uh, as of, let me see, August 16th, uh, we have 10 neuroinvasive and um, of West Nile virus, and then just eight of the West Nile fever. So, um, so the neuroinvasive is the more scary kind. Um, it is the kind that uh, people die from, um, and we've had those actually here locally, uh, right here in North Texas, close to Dallas. Uh, Denton County has had two cases of the neuroinvasive kind. They've had five cases of West Nile virus altogether. Tarrant County has had four cases. Four out of their five cases have been neuroinvasive. Uh, so that's some pretty, that's a high percentage of the neuroinvasive kind. So um, you, uh, you, this is not the same as Zika. You cannot get West Nile virus from sexual contact. You cannot get it from, uh, you can get it from traveling to places where they have West Nile virus. But um it's uh the the thing is we don't know what it does to uh i don't know what it does to pregnant women pregnant women are the ones that's our big concern when it comes to zika virus and zika here in texas here we go in dallas we have 27 cases of zika and denton four cases of zika and tarrant county 14 cases of zika now here's the deal um we're not as concerned about zika here because these are not mosquito-borne cases. These are cases where people have traveled overseas and they come back and have sex. But here's the problem. So now the CDC is warning men, if you have the Zika virus, do not have unprotected sex. And they're kind of leaving it open because now we know that Zika stays in semen for six months. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So there's still some question as to how readily... Uh, Zika can be passed on from a female to a male, uh, but it's they're they're certain that males can pass um, Zika on to females through unprotected sex for six months. 
So isn't a lot of this just, um, it's all so new, they're still kind of discovering things? Because I remember a few weeks ago, uh, the news was talking about how you could, you know, you had to wait at least six days. And then, then they were saying, you know, wait three weeks. And it seems like the time period keeps growing. So it's really, truly just because they're still trying to figure it out, right? Yeah, I was actually chastising people saying, come on, you can wait two weeks to have sex. Well, here, the thing is, is that it, yeah, we're kind of learning on the job. Now, here's the thing. It's not new. Zika is not new. It's been around since the 40s. Uh, what is new is the birth defect side of it and the microencephaly um, cases that we're having. So so that is different. And that's not something we've dealt with in the past. There are a lot of people that are pointing to um, the pesticides, the larvicides, actually, that they put in the water down in Brazil. If you've been watching the Olympics, oh, I don't yeah. know, did you see the green pool? That oh, of they... course. <laughs> so um, they are constantly battling uh, you know, uh, water issues down there. And so they've got these big ponds of water uh, that these people drink from. And so they put larvicides in them. Well, they're now they're saying that they think that the larvicides that they're putting in the water is um, uh, affecting the genetic makeup of the mosquitoes. And so they're adapting to it. And because of that, that's why they're uh, creating that's where the microencephaly comes from. So, uh, in microencephaly, it is horrible. It's it's hard to look at these little babies with their little heads like that. But um, but right now, um, it's a problem for Florida, and it's not a problem for us. And um, uh, if uh, the important thing is that the people that get uh, Zika virus that have traveled overseas or had sex with somebody that has and they've got Zika virus, they need to stay indoors. They need to make sure they don't get mosquito bites no matter what because that's what happens is they go outside, even if they go to their mailbox and a mosquito bites them and then that mosquito's got Zika in a couple of days, um, all of a sudden it's it's infected and it can spread the disease that way. So, so that's what they're trying to do is they want to quarantine people that have uh, Zika just for a little bit. Now, they don't have to quarantine guys for six months. They do have to quarantine, you know, them from having... Uh, unprotected sex but I, I you know what there's a lot of things we will talk about on the show but i'm never comfortable talking <laughs> about uh unprotected yeah. sex or sex in general and by the way we're having some uh problems today and it's actually not us i believe it's at&t that's having problems but um so we're going on and off the air a little bit and um so it's not you it's us so <laughs> um so please stay tuned through um all this so this is a big day today. I don't know if you know that, besides the fact that you're here, Meg, with oh, your you. all monoed up and everything. Um, we also, uh, this is World Mosquito Day. Oh, see, there is a day for everything. There is a day for everything. So I want you to, now there's actually in April, there's a, a Mosquito Awareness Day. So this is different. This is World Mosquito Day. So, um, and I'm going to read this. This is from the American Mosquito Control Association. If you ever want to meet a big bunch of nerds, you need <laughs> to go to this thing because it is a bunch of scientists and um, they don't know what to do with guys like me that um, have big mouths and talk a lot. And So, uh, anyways, dear American Mosquito Control Association members, and by the way, you can find all this information at mosquito.org. And uh, But here we go. In honor of World Mosquito Day, observed annually on August 20th, the American Mosquito Control Association is working to increase awareness of the importance of mosquito control and encourages the public to visit the AMC website, AMCA website, www.mosquito.org. For important mosquito information, please click here to view the full press release so you can go on there and talk about it. So if you have any questions or would like more information about World Mosquito Day, please contact Joe Conlon, uh, who is the AMCA Technical Advisor. And his name is actually going to come up here in a little bit. So um, so as the, uh, I guess the, the uh, he's not the director, but he's the technical advisor for AMCA. Now, the interesting thing about this is these are guys that most of these guys are entomologists. Some of them are in the pest control business. Um, they're, uh, we, you know, if I was in the same room with them, we would probably be arguing because uh, I'd be telling them about the importance of doing real-world testing out in the field. 
versus sure. um, versus doing lab testing. Now, a lot of these guys actually know that. Most of these guys, if they're old enough, a lot of these guys have already been through that, and they've done some real-world testing. They've done some human landing rate counts, so they know that. Um, but uh, but I think some of them would be offended if I said, you know, lab testing is not realistic. Um, and a lot of them is it's kind of like with the, with the big chemical companies, you know. Um, the thing is, a lot of these guys are making money on it. It's, you know, I, look, I understand we've, there's a reason why we have the EPA and some of the other government um, agencies. The problem is, is they've gotten so bloated and so big that they're not really serving the purpose. The EPA does more to protect chemical companies than it does to protect the environment. And that's really, its job is to protect the environment. That's a whole nother show. It Well, it's not actually. It is <laughs> Today's show, because we're going to talk about that a little bit, not oh, necessarily the EPA's, um, their responsibility with it, but we are going to talk about the EPA today uh, and talk about some pesticides and responsible use of and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're going to take a break here. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk. Um, actually, I've got a little game we're going to play uh, with Meg. If you want to call in, it's 214-787-1190 or 817 817- Seven eight seven eleven ninety. 1190 uh, Listen to us on iHeartRadio anytime, any place, and we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about pesticides here and whether they're really bad for us or not. And, uh, and so I want to just uh, play a little game here with Meg. Now, the okay. um, um, there's been some complaints about the aerial spraying over in Miami. So Zika, by the way, so Zika is now in South Beach. It's not just in, um, in the Wynwood area. It's now in South Beach. They say they're investigating four or five cases there. And that generally means they believe that that the cases are there. They're not 100% sure that they came from mosquitoes. They've got to, you know, quiz these people and make sure that they haven't been having sex and been in the wrong area. So, um, so but there, but it has spread to um, the South Beach. So now a lot more people are concerned. But here's the deal. Teachers at a Miami private school say they have been feeling ill because Miami-Dade County's mosquito control team has been spraying larvicide over their school while students and employees are outside. So it's not just larvicide. This actually nailed that they're spraying. So the cons- consensus from folks at Metropolitan International School of Miami is to spray mosquitoes earlier in the morning before a large number of people will be exposed to the larvicide. We've had sore throats and headaches, the school's principal, Inez Lozano, said. Um, and so uh, here's an, it got a neighbor that's, that's nearby said, Yesterday my grandchildren were playing with the leaves. They have a rash, so I think it's too much. Um, the county's mosquito control team, however, said the larvicide is non-toxic and targets mosquito larva. So... Um, Anyway, so they're actually, the mayor is being, they're having protests there and stuff. So, you know, here's the thing. It's this guy saying, oh, it's non-harmful and it's non-toxic. It's actually, he's got to be very careful with his wording there if he's in the business. Uh, you can't just come right out and say, hey, this stuff doesn't harm people because, you know what, there's, that's not true. And and what really is important is how they apply it. And so um, you got to understand, so these guys are spraying while kids are out there playing. When we had the plane spraying over Dallas, they said, everybody be indoors by 10 o'clock. We're going to start spraying at 10. Guess what? They start spraying at 845 and 9 o'clock instead of at 10 o'clock. So people that were outdoors were getting sprayed. So it, these all of the, the information you read about pesticides is based on them following the directions and spraying them like they're supposed to. Well, let me tell you, I know enough mis- I know enough pest control guys to tell you most of them don't follow the instructions because they don't believe that these pesticides are really harmful for people. And there's tons and tons of evidence of that. And so uh, the same with the bees. People don't think that they're harmful to the bees. And I, I talked last week about this website where this one mosquito control guy is, is – railing about how it's really more important that we save the children and the mothers instead of the bees. Okay, well, there's not they're not mutually exclusive. You can actually save 
the bees and save the mothers and children. And that's why, you know, I promote natural products and why I say our products actually work better. I'll tell you, I've been testing a lot in the last couple of weeks. I tested our, our spray on repellent the, this week uh, twice, Meg. Um, one night we were 98% effective for two hours. The next night we were 100% effective for two hours. So I'm starting off with 30 mosquitoes landing on me in a four minute period. And then for the next two hours, I sit out there after I've applied this stuff and nothing will come near me. And that is amazing. Now, pretty good stat. Yeah. That's what people are saying. You have to have DEET to do that. Well, guess what? DEET wouldn't come close to that. In fact, I'm going to do some more DEET testing and try to get some videos of it and put them on my website so people can see what I'm talking about. But here's the deal. The, um, I know that people, that the pest control guys want to argue that the pesticides aren't bad for you and that they don't hurt bees. Well, I want to, I want to read you. I just had, I had lunch with one of the guys this week and he kept talking about this one particular product and how he uses the heck out of it. And oh, he doesn't think it harms bees. So here's one. I want to read this to you. And, um, you tell me what you think of this, okay, Meg? This pesticide is extremely toxic to fish and aqu aquatic invertebrates. Drift and runoff from treated areas may be hazardous to aquatic or organisms in neighboring areas, or I guess um, neighborhood organizers like Obama. I'm sorry, I really shouldn't go down that path. But, oh boy. Okay, okay, care should be used when spraying to avoid fish and reptile pets in and around ornamental ponds. This product is highly toxic to bees exposed to direct treatment or residues on blooming crops or weeds. Do not apply this product or allow it to drift in blooming crops if bees are visiting the treatment area. So here's my question. Does this product harm bees? I would say so. <laughs> I pretty much think they laid it out there saying that. Okay, so this is Talstar, probably hugely, very, very popular product i'm just reading their label okay so that's all i'm doing i'm not reading something off the internet this is on their label um and that actually can uh contains something called bifenthrin it's about 7.9 percent by thin which is a pyrethroid and so um many of the pyrethroids will have the same uh, information on them and the same precautionary statements so I'm guessing that by the by reading that, it sounds like they might possibly not be good. It might not be good for bee colonies. I'm just guessing. Yeah, that's probably a good guess. Yes. So, uh, and then the drift, and you can't control the spray, and so, uh, so here's another one. Here's another one. I want to. Um, this one. Uh, let's. I'll tell you the name of this. You can guess the name if you want to of any of these products. If you feel like, here's another. One. This product is extremely toxic toxic to fresh water and estuarine, whatever that means, estuarine, I'm guessing estuaries, fish and invertebrates. Use with care when applying in areas adjacent to any body of water. To protect the environment, do not allow pesticide to enter or run off into storm drains, drainage ditches, gutters, or surface waters. Uh, this is a product called Suspend SL. This pesticide is highly toxic to bees exposed to direct treatment. Do not apply or allow it to drift to crops or weeds on which bees are actively foraging. Does that sound familiar? It sounds like the last one that we just heard about, exactly. which sounds pretty bad. This has a delta methrin in it, so it ends in THRIN, which means it's probably a pyrethroid. And, uh, and so, so I think that's really interesting. So it sounds to me, once again, now a lot of, you know what, you might be listening to this show, you might be one of these people. You may be spraying these products over a lake to keep spiders off your docks and off your boat if you are you know what? You're basically you're breaking the law, and you are um, not spraying in accordance with the directions on the product. So here's a product. So they actually found um, there were people with um, Zika virus in San Diego, and I want to remind y'all that that clearly 25 percent, one quarter of all Zika cases are still in Florida. Okay. So that's real important to remember. We most places don't have much to be concerned with. In Texas, we've only gotten like 120 cases over the whole state. We're pretty big. So in San Diego, there actually um, there's a group that is protesting um, the uh, spraying of, of pesticides in San Diego. And here's what they're spraying. They're spraying pyranone 25-5. 
Um, once again, you know, they're saying, oh, this product's okay. It's, you know, we spray this, it's not going to harm anybody. This product is toxic to fish for terrestrial uses. Do not apply it at water to areas where surface water is present or to intertidal areas below the mean high mark. Do not apply when weather conditions favor drift from areas treated. Do not contaminate water by cleaning of equipment and disposals. Shrimp and crab may be killed at application rates recommended on this label. So do not apply where these are important resources. Apply this product only as specified in this label. I don't think they have shrimp and crab in San Diego. Do you? Uh, gee, I think there's like a big ocean there. There so might be. They so might have one or two. They might have one or two. So, yes. Yeah. So, once again, so who are you going to believe? This is what I'm getting at, people. Who are you going to believe? You really want to believe these guys? Do you want to believe the chemical companies, the guys that make this stuff? Um, do you want to believe the guys that make their living applying this stuff? Or do you want to maybe take all the information in and think that, okay, so perhaps there's a place for this stuff but maybe we need to take a harder look at it and the way we're applying it so um now this is the most this is the number the leading product put in misting systems today okay so if you've got a mosquito misting system you are using uh, one of probably two or three products um sector uh, Pyganic, um, maybe Duet, um, and this one is called Riptide. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm up oh, three tide. minutes. Don't worry, we're rick- we're going to rip right through this Riptide. This product is toxic toxic to aquatic organisms, including fish and invertebrates. Drift and runoff may be hazardous. This product is highly toxic to bees. Exposed to direct treatment on blooming crops or weeds, not apply this product. Allow it to drift. Do not apply directly to water to areas where surface water is present or to intertidal areas below the mean high water mark. So if you're spraying this and you have drains and you've got runoff and you're running your sprinklers every day, guess what? You know what? You're doing exactly what they're telling you not to do. Yeah, I feel like you keep reading the same thing know, over and over, but you're just like changing different products. Well, so Duet is what they sprayed out of the airplanes uh, here several years ago when we had West Nile virus. And um, and it says, do not apply over bodies of water and in parentheses has lakes, rivers, permanent streams. I would consider White Rock Lake. Is that misnamed or is that actually a lake? No, it's a lake. Okay. Well, then I would not have sprayed over the lake, which is exactly what they did. And we ended up with a bunch of dead fish on the side of the lake. So um, so all I'm telling you, oh, here's one. So this is, okay, only use this product in residential misting systems that have been calibrated, calibrated to apply no more than the maximum application rate of 9.5 fluid ounces uh, per 1,000 square feet, cubic feet. Okay, most people are spraying three, four, five times or more than the legal amount. So this is the other part. That's what I'm saying. These guys don't, you know what, they know what the rules are, but they're not following them. So if you're trusting them, um, I'm asking you to just be open-minded. That's all. Um, so listen to some of the stuff I'm saying, and I've got some information from a doctor uh, that's talking about it and some other experts in the field. So I want to tell you all about those a little bit when we come back. Um, call in if you'd like, 214-787-1190, 817-787-1190. I can never remember those. It's so difficult. But anyways, please call in. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to challenge me on any of this information, come on, bring it on, bring it on. All right, we'll be right back after this message. Thank you. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you, David Bowie, for that introduction. Um, so, um, okay, so we're talking about pesticides and, um, you know, whether, you know, you got to weigh whether uh, we're harming ourselves more by spraying the pesticides or taking our chances. I don't believe you have to sacrifice our long-term health to uh, eliminate and protect yourselves from mosquitoes. That's what um, my, me and all my service providers, that's what we focus on is, so we use essential oil-based products. 
Um, and it's the combination of those products that actually make our products more effective than the chemicals. So you don't have to sacrifice. And so, uh, so I want to read you. So this is, uh, so they're, they were getting um, protests in Miami. So they now have 35 cases of Zika virus. And so, uh, so they were um, protesting. And this is locally, locally uh, contracted uh, Zika virus. Uh, and so in Miami, they're getting protests. The mayor's getting attacked by these people saying, what are you spraying? What are you spraying? Don't do all that and all this kind of stuff. And so um, the CDC is out there and they're recommending uh, that the men who travel to areas of Zika, including an area of Miami's Wynwood, abstain from unprotected sex. Um, here we go. They talk about, uh, but they haven't found any evidence of the women doing it. Um, uh, by the way, so you know that it started right here in Texas. We had, we were the first one with it, just like Ebola. Um, but what's worse, getting the Zika virus or being exposed to potentially harmful chemical pesticides? So um, I went to, there's a web, website called circa.com, C-I-R-C-A.com. It's a health and science site. And as more states are beginning to em- deploy aerial spraying campaigns to kill off mosquitoes, some scientists are warning the chemical spray could be harmful to humans in the long term. So more than 1,000 people in the United States have been infected with the virus, which can cause severe birth defects like microencephaly. Airplanes have been flying over Miami, spraying an EPA-approved insecticide called NALID, a t- neurotoxin that kills adult mosquitoes. Now, didn't we just read that this is only a larvicide? No, it kills adult mosquitoes. This is what I'm trying to tell you. The information is not consistent. These guys are not being truthful with us. So we got the benefits versus the risks. Uh, sometimes scientists say high exposure to chemicals used in NALID can have negative long-term health effects for humans. I think we need to take a step back and recognize that we should always look at these interventions in terms of risk versus benefit, said Dr. David Perlmutter, a board-certified neurologist. Sure, there's a benefit here, but there is risk. And he goes on to talk about trichlorophon, uh, which is in NALID. Besides the fact that NALID kills bees and butterflies, which are important pollinators that help with agriculture. It's not just the insects. There are other studies that suggest the chemicals in NALID could be harmful to humans. Animal testing found high exposure to this trichloroform. Uh, one of the main ingredients in NALID could cause cancer and birth defects. That's pretty scary stuff. It is. Well, you know, so you want Zika birth defects or you want trichloroform birth defects, which you got a choice. no birth How about defects? no birth defects? That'd be great. When the offspring were examined at birth, there was a severe reduction in brain weight in the case of trichloroform. Scientists at the University of Oslo tested trichloroform on guinea pigs. They found that injections of the chemical in pregnant guinea pigs impacted the brain development of fetuses. Now, this product, Nalid, by the way, has been banned in Europe. And they are not using NALID in Puerto Rico because they're afraid of the effects of the pesticide hmm. in Puerto Rico. A 2014 study by scientists at University of California Davis found that pregnant women living within a few miles of farms where pesticides like NALID were sprayed had a 60% increased risk of their child developing autism. Wow. Yep. And so... Um, so I think, so David Perlmutter, this doctor, and he actually has a web, website. It is, I think it's D-R Perlmutter, P-E-R-L-M-U-T-T-E-R.com. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about him. But So that's the thing. I know you've been seeing a lot of doctors lately because you're uh, <laughs> with all the illnesses you got. And yeah. are spreading around. And so, um, so well, let me ask you this. Would you trust your doctor or... Like if you had a friend that said, oh, here's what I think's wrong with you. And uh, but look, I've read a whole bunch about, you know, diseases and, and the symptoms you've got. And so would you trust them or would you trust the doctor more? Oh, that's a tough call. I mean, the doctor is supposed to be educated and and have experience. Yeah, I think I would trust the doctor. I don't yeah, think it's a tough I, I would, call at all. I would feel like I would weird. do that. It's kind of a a mono-infected answer you gave there because you really – is. Uh-huh, I don't know what that means. But my doctor said I didn't have mono. Oh, 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 oh. What is it that you've got? That's a topic for you another show. Have, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I think I know what that means. No, it was the second <laughs> opinion that said I had mono. 
<laughs> okay. All right, so drperlmutter.com, one of the most commonly used classes of fogging agents to kill adult mosquitoes are the pyrethroids. Though there is a move now to embrace the idea of bringing DDT back into the game, pyrethroids remain pretty much the first line of defense when it comes to fogging infested neighborhoods and homes through the Americas. So pyrethroids are whenever and the, the delta methrin, uh, resmethrin, anything of those things that end in methrin, those are pyrethroids. So um, here's the thing. People often say, and you're going to hear, you know, if you call some of these big misting companies, they're going to tell you, oh, it's a botanical insecticide, making it sound all fluffy and everything. And it's not. It, this botanical insecticide is called pyrethrins, and it is actually a neuro, neurotoxin, and it kills. Here's the thing. If it kills mosquitoes, it kills ladybugs, butterflies, and bees. It kills the pollinators, and so that's all I'm getting at. Is so if you're spraying five or six times a day with a killer insecticide in your yard, seriously, you've got to be able to realize that can't be good, Right. Am I crazy here? I... No, but I think a lot of people don't. When they hear like a mosquito, Steve, or something like that, they just expect to be some sort of an exterminator and not necessarily a repeller. You know, when you talk about your organic and natural yeah. products and stuff like that, they probably assume that you're just killing everything. Right. And I think that's the huge differentiator between you and some of these big chemical companies. And like you said, the fluffy ones that say they're botanical and all that is the fact that um, – more people need to be aware and recognize that you actually are repelling them. You're never saying that you're going to kill them. You don't right. want to kill anything. Right. And and we, as much as we don't do now when we do yard sprays, we apply a huge amount of, and it's all about dose. When it comes to pesticides, it's all about dose. Even though our products are essential oil-based, um, they still, and they're EPA exempt, which means I can say they're safe on kids and pets. Uh, but the thing is, is still when we spray those those products like we do the yard sprays, you're going to end up with some dead fleas and possibly some dead chiggers. OK, so I'm just going to be up front with no you. No complaints. There. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't had anybody you know, with mosquitoes. Most people don't really want to save the mosquitoes either. But uh, mosquitoes are a food source for a whole bunch of, of uh, amphibians and, and uh, birds and bats and everything. So, um, OK. So here's this Dr. Perlmutter again. So again, drperlmutter.com. Please read up on this. All I'm asking you people to do is do a little research. Don't just listen to the guy that comes out to sell you a misting system because guess what? He makes his money by selling you a misting system, sign, getting you to sign a contract. The research has specifically evaluated risk of autism in relation to exposure to pyrethroids. Yes, the same pesticide now being used to carpet bomb Zika carrying mosquitoes. The studies show that exposure of mothers to pyrethroids during the third trimester of pregnancy was associated with an 87% increased risk of autism for their child. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, our, our rates of autism in our children are going through the roof now. And uh, and there's a lot of people asking questions why. I think this makes a lot of sense here. I think that, um, you know, that this widespread use of, of pesticides without thinking about it um, is something that we need to be concerned with. The EPA actually is concerned with pollinators, and they've actually been doing some things and pushing some legislation. And there's a lot of people that think that at some point they're going to say they're going to disallow um uh, pyrethroids, at least in, in most cases, at least in general broad cases like what we're doing where we're spraying it out of airplanes all over everything. Right. Um, and so I do think that there is a possibility of that. And hopefully, you know, the Mosquito Steve products are going to be sitting there ready to, you know, solve Save the, the day. problem. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully. Um, all I want these guys to do is be open minded enough to try it. And actually, the city of Dallas, through some back doors I've been working on, um, we are going to do some testing with the product uh, in well, some I, residential neighborhoods. I had firsthand uh, feedback for you from oh. a, a 10 year old and almost eight year old, uh, Victoria and Catherine. Now, my see, that's who you want to listen to. My boyfriend's to, daughters, who said, uh, I said, Do you want to call in and talk to him? And they were like, No, we don't want to be on air. But they said, uh, We put it on and it works. That's all you need to know. I What a great show it would be if we had an eight and a 10 year old call in now. Oh, that I will, would be I will so see what cool. I can do. Maybe uh, maybe we can talk them into it one of these times. So, uh, so anyway, so this is my this is my rant. I know I'm on a rant today, but um, you know I think there's a lot of evidence, a lot of evidence, 
uh, about this. Uh, there's another site if you guys are looking for um, more information on this. Uh, it's the Pan uh, Pesticide Action Network of North America. P a n n a dot org. P a n n a dot org, and um, you can read there uh, from learning disabilities to autism, diabetes, and cancer. A startling number of childhood diseases and disorders are on the rise. Children are sicker today than they were a generation ago. So um, they're talking about some some heavy duty stuff. At least you know even ADHD. You know um, a lot of this stuff they're pointing to pesticides. So. Check these things out. Um, there is a lot of research about this. Um, please, please, please don't listen to just what the chemical companies say. Uh, listen to me. Listen to uh, listen to some of these other people because I get my information from these guys. There's another honeycolony.com uh, is talking about neonicotinoids, and we actually have studies now. These are studies from Europe that are saying the neonicotinoids are um, having major effects on uh, colonization of bees and the um, sperm level in their semen. Yeah. So. Well, and you're saying listen to you, but you're actually the person who's taking the initiative to do the research and to wade through it all. It's not like you're uh, coming up with this information on your own. You've got credible sources to back it and everything. It's just getting buried, and people either aren't taking the time to research it or they're unaware of it. Well, in fact, yeah, I mean, you should see the amount of research that I bring in every week when I'm, I spend a lot of time researching this stuff. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why I go out there and I count mosquitoes and do all that. I do believe that um, the research that I do um, has weight. If this is just some guy griping about, you know, oh, you know, I, I look to see who's behind it. Do they have any degrees? Do they have any, you know, or is this just somebody that just started a blog? Anybody can have a blog. And so uh, so I look to make sure that these people have some credibility. And so uh, before we go talking about it, look, the light's blinking there. So, uh, oh, my God. We're still okay. Uh, see, I, I don't know that I believe you. I don't know if I trust you. Hey, here's the deal. If you can hear me out there, call in 214-787-1190, 817-787-1190. Um, hope you're listening to us here on Talk Radio 1190. We also are available anywhere in the world, you know, during the week. Or Actually, you can listen to our podcast all the time. We're available on Mosquito Steve's YouTube uh, channel, but also on iHeartMedia uh, and iHeartRadio. Um, you can listen to that anywhere in the world. So when we come back, um, all right, I've been complaining a lot today and whining and complaining. So uh, Meg and I are going to talk a little bit about um, what's going on, about mental health, about some other issues, what how I got started doing this, and whether I'm healthy mentally or not. Probably <laughs> oh, not. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, come on back. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Welcome back to my rock and roll show. Hey, this is Mosquito <laughs> Steve. Guitar. So, yes, love that guitar in Boston. Oh, my gosh, I love that band when I was growing up. Cannot tell y'all all the things that I did listening to those songs. But, uh, anyways, welcome back to the Mosquito Steve show. I am Mosquito Steve. And what makes me that way is I'm crazy enough to stand outside and count mosquitoes hundreds and hundreds of times. And just did that again some more this week and last week. And uh, that's how I determine whether these products work. I go out in the real world and I count the mosquitoes that land on me. And I know that makes me really weird. But um, so anyways, hey, we have a caller, Misty. I love that name, Misty. So this is a, this is, what is, there's something about this. Me on the radio talking to Misty. Wasn't that like a, <laughs> isn't that a movie or something? Maybe. So, I've never heard that one before. Though. Oh, you have? I think Clint Eastwood was in that movie. Wasn't he? <laughs> I, I don't know. So. Anyways. Okay. Hi, Misty. Welcome Hi. For, to the Mosquito Steve Show. Hi. I have a question. Okay. Um, and it's about mosquitoes. Okay. Um, I run a lot and um, mostly in the evenings, and I am like a mosquito magnet. And then um, they will bite me during the during my run and even when i'm back in the house like i'll wake up with new mosquito bites and i don't know i mean how long can you wear the deet spray or is there any alternative of something i could use like for running and for sleeping okay so um first of all do they do they bite you in just one area is it mostly your ankles or is it all over kind of all over like um even places like where I have clothes on. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if if you're running, uh, I don't know what part of town you're in, but if you're in an area, you're okay. If you a lot of places where people like to run, you have streams that are stagnant, and you've got probably floodwater mosquitoes, some very large mosquitoes. And so those will, they'll go right through your clothes. I mean, they, yeah. and other things, if you're running, you also may have loose clothing. And so mosquitoes can get up in there. Mosquitoes adapt and learn really, really quickly. So they're, they've probably learned to deal with runners. Here's what I'd recommend. So DEET, if you're running longer than 45 minutes, you're not going to get the protection from DEET that you're wanting. Oh. Um, so I would recommend, um, honestly, I would go with, um, with our stuff. So here's, I, just this week I tested. And I spray this stuff all over. Now, here's the other part of it is you need to spray all over from head to toe. I'm assuming you take a shower when you get home um, from running. I'm assuming you're running long enough to sweat, right? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm getting a little personal with you here, Miss. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but so, it's good. I mean, because it's really, I mean, it's, you know, it's pesky and it's scary. Yes. So, um, so I first of all, you want to spray from head to toe. So just spraying your um, your if you've got long sleeves on, you're just spraying your hands. You're not getting protection. So oh, okay. uh, do not rub it in anything, whether it's DEET or my product or anything else. Once you put it on, don't rub it in. Don't use lotions. Use spray ons. So these are these are some of my best tips. But I will tell you, the reason that I'm in this business is because I wanted to make sure that our products beat the chemicals. DEET, even though it claims to work six hours, DEET breaks down in 45 five minutes at an hour you're falling below 75 percent efficacy so if there's 100 mosquitoes out there with which i'm assuming there is uh, you're going to get at least 25 of them landing on you that's not good enough for me in fact if our products fall below 90 percent then we throw them out and start over i'll tell you oh. my my test this week we were um first night we were 98 percent effective for two hours, we were 98% yeah. effective. And the next night, we were 100% effective. So I started with 30, uh, about 37 mosquitoes the first night when we were 98% effective and nearly 30 mosquitoes the second night. And, and I sit out there continuously. So that is pretty amazing that in yeah, two that hour is. period, I, I'm not, I only got two mosquitoes landing on me in two hours and i'm in an area where trust me the mosquitoes are ferocious and numerous so so i would recommend this it's it is oil based so it's gonna um some of it is going to come off but it's going to stick to you a little bit better but just cover yourself well in this stuff uh don't try and and save money that's the thing is that the important thing is to get you protected that's really what uh, counts the most so our products by the way we're available at um Gecko Hardware out in Carrollton. What's close to you guys out there? Do you work out in Carrollton too? Yeah, I do. Um, and mm. I'm not sure because I just moved here um, from San Antonio. So Oh, you did? Wow. Yeah. Well, so, so yeah, so you really are astonished by this mosquito yeah. thing. You know what I hate worse because I used to run, hard to believe, as big as I am that I used to run, but um, <laughs> I, I'd get out early in the mornings, like at 5 in the morning, and start running around White Rock Lake. I bet I ate a thousand gnats every time I went running. Yeah, that was oh, yeah. still, <laughs> like bugs are bad out there. Yes, yes. So, so um, out in Carrollton, I don't know where it's available, but I'll tell you this: if you order online, um, in fact, today I've got I actually got products on sale today until um, oh, okay. the end of the day. But if you order online, it'll be to you. It only takes a day. So if I ship it Monday morning, you'll have it on Tuesday, okay. and uh, and that's really the best bet. And you're probably you're going to save a little money. A lot of the retailers actually mark my product up. Um, significantly um, because they know it works and it's a great product so um, what's the online site mosquitosteve.com thanks for asking oh, okay. oh my okay. gosh I, I probably would have <laughs> forgot to tell people that so oh, okay. that's great mosquitosteve.com so um yeah yeah please do uh, and also i'm on facebook instagram uh, uh, i'm i have people twitter for me i do a little bit so i'm a tweeter or a yeah, twat i'll follow you or, on twitter oh. too oh you did what no, what, what, Meg? What, Meg? We'll, we'll address later. Oh, oh, I'm not supposed to say a tweeter? No, you're okay with that one. Oh, it's the... It's Twitter, and you do tweets. Okay, all right. Well, whatever. <laughs> I don't do any of that. Very, very little of it anyway. So, so, uh, but thanks for calling in, Misty. And uh, right, please, please check us out on social media. And I've usually got lots of videos and information for people there. So, uh, thanks awesome. for calling. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I think I want to meet Misty. That was great. Yeah, she had a nice voice, huh? She does. 
she's she probably moved up there with her boyfriend now, that boyfriend thing. Oh, so <laughs> darn I boyfriend. am, by the way, I'm the oldest living, never been married, single heterosexual guy, just in case y'all didn't know that. In the whole world? Or I think so. I, do you know anybody else that's older that's never been married and that's heterosexual? Yes, we have one person, but I cannot use his name. Uh huh. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a question for you. Oh my gosh! Okay. So today we've talked a lot about um, chemicals and the the companies and and your organic natural products and how much research you do. I mean, you're you're one person, you yes. know, and you've been working on this what about sixteen years now? Yep. And it's been obviously a labor of love. This turned into a great passion. It's been turning into a business, but. Um, it still has huge growth potential. So how do you, I mean, like, really the whole world should know about you. How do you grow? Do you do you have investors that help you? Or how are you able to, like, really hit the masses with this? Well, Besides that is obviously our radio station. That is, a, <laughs> that's right. This is, a, and that's why I love this medium. I really love radio. Um, the, in fact, local radio helped me build the brand here in North Texas and so I, I love radio. I believe in it. Um, I know a lot of people are more interested in the podcast part of this and what happens after we've done the live show. But I love the live show. This is this is uh, this is fun to me. I actually, I, mean, I had a rock and roll show and a jazz show when I was at SMU on the radio. Of course, you and that was back when we had carts and all that. But, and, uh, but re- truthfully, I mean, whenever there's something in the news, like the stuff that rolled out in um, you know Miami and that that area. Uh, you have people reaching out to you from all over the country. Yes, not even just locally wanting to do interviews. So you're you're you know known as an expert, but like how does one person affect change? Well, so the way that I do that, I have I've had some great angel investors that have helped me get to this point. In 15 years, um, we I had some other products that we did, but I formed Mosquito Steve in 2010, and since then I've actually taken on, um, you know less than a hundred thousand dollars in investment. Um, and so I've got some great angels. They helped me get that far. We really do. We're at that point where we need to, we need more. (laughs) We need, uh, uh, before I can get the word out enough, I've got to have some major investment. And, and so part of the problem is, is that, um, we've got some people like I've got some, uh, shopping shows, TV shopping shows and things like that that want to put us on. Well, I don't even have, you know, I can't support the the amount of sales we would get. That would cost a lot more than we make. Um, so uh, what's great is is uh, what really keeps us going because the retail side, we're, you know, you got to sell a whole bunch of bottles of mosquito repellent to make any money, especially, you know, at my wholesale prices. And so, uh, so it's really the commercial side. It's the guys that get out there and do the sprays on a regular basis, and uh, and they've really they're you know they're almost as much they're as important to me today as the investors. That's what keeps our cash flowing is is those guys out doing misting systems and yard sprays. Um, but yeah, we are we're looking for um, some some long term partners and um, investors, and so um, so. You know, it's which is not my favorite part of the business. I don't like, you know, having to do that because I it feel is like business. it is. But I feel like I got to justify my existence, and it's interesting because I got to tell you, some people find out about me and what I do and how I do it, and they instantly they get it. And then some people they want to see what's your earnings, what's this or that. You know what? This is not that kind of a deal. This is a you believe in the product and you believe then you realize this is a gigantic market. This really could. This could easily be a billion dollar business in five or six years. Yeah. It could go just huge. And so I'm looking for somebody that gets it. And um, and so um, so we, we are we're coming up on the two minute mark. So I want to tell people if you have any questions for me, please send me an email. Steve at mosquito Steve dot com. That's Steve at mosquito Steve dot com. Be sure and spell mosquito right. It's M O S. Q U I T O. Uh, it's not M E S Q U I T E. That's Mesquite, Texas. And uh, but this is Steve at mosquitosteve.com. You can always uh, call our office at 214 520 during the week. Um, we're answering the phones. Uh, but if you'll send me an email, I might even answer on a Saturday or Sunday at midnight, or you just never know. 
And uh, so uh, please, uh, with any of your questions regarding pesticides, mosquitoes, any other insects you got, um, and I appreciate you guys listening in. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all. And Meg, thanks for being on, and I hope you get feeling better. Oh, I hope, thank you very much. I hope scientists figure out what's wrong with you <laughs> and fix it. Mystery. <laughs> All right, y'all have a great week, and uh, look forward to talking to you next week.